Hi right, guys, welcome back to a, another DJF video. Today I'll be going over this uh, Cooler Master Cosmos 2 system of mine. Um, recently, Asus and Cooler Master have signed up as new sponsors, so I'll be able to go through this case and also the Asus ball that I've recently put in this system. So previously I had this uh, EVJ board um, and I can tell you I hated it. Um, for some people they're good. Um, the bottom line is it's just a glorified gaming board, um, sort of nowhere near the server capabilities that it should be able to do. The fact that it says it's uh, Intel 5520 chipset, um, you pretty much put more than one RAID card in and um, it fills up the option ROM and you pretty much can't boot Windows. So it's merely designed for uh, RAID, uh, sorry, for video cards as that's what um, you're meant to do with it, but still running a server chipset you should be able to do more. So. Um, I had so many issues with that, so I got rid of this board and I put in this Asus board, which is a little bit smaller, but the box is about two times smaller. Um, so it's the Z9PE-D8 uh, WS Workstation board. Um, it's pretty much a server board. Um, it'll do everything that the uh, EVGA can do, but it can do a lot more as well. Um, so some of the things it can do... Um, it does, all right, first of all, it's PCIe Gen 3. Um, the EVGA uh, wasn't Gen 3, it was uh, Gen 2 for PCI Express. Not that it really matters too much these days at the moment, but uh, having Gen 3 on all your slots is pretty sweet. Um, it also runs your new, uh, it's pretty much the X79 socket, so it runs two of those in the Xeon version, so your E5s, so your 2600 series, and it also runs your V2 uh, Xeons, which are sort of your highest Xeons that have just come out. Uh, it runs two of those, um, and no, you cannot run a standard i7 um, in this. Uh, you have to run a Xeon based. Um, I'm running ES chips, uh, engineering samples. They're 10 times cheaper. They're exactly the same. They perform the same. They are just cheaper. Um, so, pretty much, I'm running two 2667s. Uh, they're six cores each, 12 threads. They clocked at 2.9. I managed to overclock them to 3.1, which is about the max, and then they turbo a little, little bit higher than that. So I got 24 threads that run at about 3.1 to 3.3 uh, constantly, or when they're in turbo mode, which is uh, pretty sweet for me because um, I have a 7970 in there as well, which does a bit of gaming. So it's pretty much an, an all-round board, um, and I haven't had any issues. I've got every slot bar one full. Um, I've had every slot on this board filled up. Never had an issue, never had an issue posting, booting, not a thing. So um, it looks like this new uh, C602 chipset is um, really good. Um, I'll talk about the case. I did say I'm going to talk about the case. I'll do that in a tick, but I'll get this board out of the way. So if we have a look um, at some of the things on the box, I'll just sort of go around it. You should be able to get that in there if you wanted to. I probably won't read everything out, but this is a really nice board. Um, I pretty much sold the EVGA and for a little bit more I bought this new. So the EVGA still has a fairly large um, sell price for gamers and that, potentially because of its uh, overclocking capabilities. You cannot overclock on this board whatsoever. Um, everything's locked, whereas with the EVGA you've got full standard um, X58 overclocking features so you can get um, massive results on, um, on the older uh, chipset. But um, this one you can't overclock, it's not a huge concern. For me, I don't need to be running four, 4.5 gig on um, on every core. Just get a shot on there. All right, so that's pretty much it. Um, if you want to look at this board, um, Z9PE-D8WS. Um, yeah, so it's one of the very, very few boards on the market that does quad 16 by slot. So if you're only running, um, if you're only running four cards in the one, two, three, four blue slots, they'll all run at 16 by. At PCI 3, uh, like not even your Asus uh, Rampage 4 Black Edition will do that. Um, there's no boards out at the moment, um, except I think there may be one ASRock one that is an X79, the Extreme 11, but that is actually more than this board, and that's just a single socket board. Um, and these ones are good because uh, not like the EVGA where it's kind of um, you can run everything off one CPU. 
This one uh, of the first CPU controls, I think, the first four PCI Express. It controls the um, half the uh, the memory banks. The second CPU controls this, uh, the rest of the memory banks, and then the rest of the uh, the PCI Express slots. And then so much does the SATA and all that. So you're pretty much load balancing and sharing your whole system on um, on both of uh, the CPUs. You can run just one CPU, mind you. You'll lose a few slots. Um, you'll lose half your half your RAM. This does quad channel. I've got 64 gigs of DDR3. Um, you may notice, you'll probably see later on, that two sticks on the end there are different. Uh, they're Kingston, the rest of it is Patriot. Um, when I had the Patriot, I had the six sticks in uh, the triple channel board. Now that I've gone with the quad channel, I need two more sticks and it's pretty rare to find this RAM anymore. So I'm going to have to go to eBay and try and pick some up. Um, all right, so that's pretty much those boards covered. So we're really, really happy with that board. Um, a little bit smaller, a little bit easier to work with. Um, I did have to change my whole uh, theme of the case from red to blue, as it's a completely red, uh, sorry, completely blue board. Um, I'll just move this over. So I did a review on this recently, about four or five months ago. Um, it's actually got quite a few views. Um, I've had a lot of people asking questions, so I thought I'd just do a, an updated video. Uh, a few things people mentioned was noise. Um, it was very loud. Um, bear in mind that your, the microphone for doing videos, it picks up a lot more noise um, being so close. So it will be amplified a bit more than what it actually sounds. Plus, I have a dedicated server room downstairs. Um, everything else is upstairs, so I don't mind. This is quite quiet to some of the other servers. Um, I have a Blade server as well that runs uh, stuff when I need to, and that is heaps noisy. So this is actually nothing compared to that. Um, as for the lights, same thing with the lights. Most of the lights I can turn off, some I can't turn off. Um, I'm not too concerned with the lights. Um, as for weight, yes, it does weigh a ton. I can just manage to move it from here to my car, which is about 15 meters, 10 meters if I need to, uh, but it is a struggle. Um, so once again, with this uh, plexi side panel, I made this one. I just went down to Bunnings and uh, grabbed a large sheet of, I think that's probably three or two mil. Um, it could have been a bit thicker, but um, it would have cost too much for the uh, the plexi. And yeah, pretty much just shaped it, cut it, um, managed to get the curve. I don't know if you can see the curve in there, you might be able to, but it actually curves the same as the case. Um, I'll move over a bit more with the standard features of the case. Um, I'm not sure if they have released a clear side panel. I think you have to get one uh, made by a second company or something, but I believe they're Cooler Master Cosmos SE now comes with the side panel version, and I believe the clear side panel version is cheaper than the non uh, see through side panel. So that's pretty sweet to have that. Um, some other things about this I think this case is going on for two years now. Um, if you look at this, you'd probably think that this is not a two year old case. Um, I have done some work to it, but bear in mind I was looking at a complete stock one last week, and um, it hasn't, it's pretty much exactly the same, just not without the white. But you would think that it pretty much came off the product line uh, last week. It is still with today's uh, technology. There's pretty much nothing in here that you don't get on cases these days. Um, it's still at your extra PCIe um, slot sort of cover on the side. So if you've got things um, like, I don't know, uh, fans or things that go on a PCI slot um, that don't actually plug into your board, you can stick them on the side. Um, it's got your one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Still got your ten. Um, Oops, that's just a lock. Um, the sort of design features of it, it still looks really, really, really modern. Um, if I swing this around, it's going to make a noise because it's really heavy. All right, so that's the front. Um, I have painted this from the blue, uh, from the stock black to the blue, um, and it doesn't quite go down too much now because I mean, it is meant to be automatic like that, but I've had this out so many times to paint it. So I painted that blue to go with the theme. Um, that in there is just my fill port that's connected to a tube to fill up my cool answer. Res and pump. It's still got your two hot swap bays in there that should be locked, but they're not. Um, so you can lock those and they just go straight to a hot swap uh, backplane and then they just plug into your motherboard as well. Um, and then, yeah, another feature I really like is this because uh, pretty much when you carry it, it is really hard to carry something that has a curve on it. Uh, so being able to just uh, take that off so easily and then you can get a good grip on a nice right angle um, sort of uh, corner. And then you just got your fans in there. It comes with the, I think that's like a 200 mil or a 180. Uh, that's LED. And then I just stuck one in the bottom there as well. And that just pops on like that. Um, 
I'll go around to the back. Um, I have added the side radiator on it. It is crazy because I ran out of room inside. Um, I'll go on to that a little bit later. It swings in and out. Um, moving on a bit more to the back. Uh, right, so I've got quick uh, disconnects on there. So what I can do is I can take the side panel off. I can undo these two. I've reversed them so I can put these two back onto this one. Um, and then the system can run again because there's a radiator up the, at the top. Mind you, it'll run a bit hotter because you're bypassing this whole radiator. Um, but yeah, if I ever needed to take this off to work on it or do something, I can still run my system like that. Um, or if I want to save a bit of weight when I'm carrying it, I can take this off because this adds probably about 10 kilos, the side panel, the full radiator and the radiator itself. Um, that's just the Fobia, I think that's how you pronounce it, uh, 1080 Extreme. It's pretty much like three um, 360s joined together into one massive one. All right, so I can see a little bit better now. Um, I'll just go through some of the uh, devices I've got in the PCI Express slots. Uh, top one is an Intel uh, dual 10 gigabit uh, network card. I think it's a 520-X2 uh, or something like that. They're really good cards. Uh, next one is the Acer Zona uh, D2X. Uh, that's really good. Um, I've been using that for a few years now. Uh, top card is just an NVIDIA GT630. That's just to run some of the extra screens I have because I run about five or six screens um, as my below HD7970. Uh, it struggles running uh, a lot of screens at uh, 2560 by 1440 purely because um, I don't have the extra adapters to get to uh, 1440p and I don't really feel like spending $100 per adapter. It was actually cheaper to get a card and I can get two off that. Um, and then the next two are just my two RAID cards, LSI 9268Is. Uh, one does all the internal gear um, and one does half of the internal gear and the other port goes to this port right down the bottom here. You might just be able to see it under these uh, water cooling tubes. Uh, it's a, a mini SAS out external that goes to my Norco uh, storage array. So I've got a Nor Norco 4224. I'll show you that a little bit later on. Uh, that's got the remaining 60 terabytes of storage. Um, and that gets connected via that external link. So I've got 20 terabytes of storage in here, 60 terabytes in the, uh, in the Norco. Um, so we'll spin this around and we'll have a look at the front, or the actual insides. Um, so this system at the moment probably weighs probably 50, 60 kilos. Just take the side panel off. So that just clips on exactly the same way as the um, original one does. Um, and it took me about a day to make that side panel. So if anyone sort of asks, um, I probably aren't really making them um, for other people or starting a, a manufacturing line because, yeah, it was just too long um, to get that one done. So, And I'm surprised how well it actually turned out because uh, I was just using standard basic tools. So... Um, so pretty much that's everything inside. Um, I've got your SSD, just an Intel down the bottom there. I've got a, another SSD jammed in, I think, the middle here. Um, that's a Fujitsu. I do a lot of Adobe work, so uh, that has Adobe installed on it. Uh, you might just be able to see it. It's actually wedged in, um, in that little hole there. Um, so there's all my hard drives. They're all full with just standard. I've actually got uh, blanking plates over those. Um, so they're all standard uh, three and a half inch mechanical drives, um, a mixture of two T's, uh, 1.5 T's, um, all those. Uh, so that's the water cooling setup there. I've got a 360 at the top. I've got the 1080 on the side. Um, and then the pump is just a um, little D5, I believe, in the, uh, in the front. Um, some people say it's probably going to struggle. Um, it's probably just enough, but I don't really have any more room to put a larger pump. Uh, most larger pumps are going to be ugly anyway. Uh, I just really like that little one. Uh, the flow rate is fine. The, the temperatures are fine. These Xeons run really cool. And the video card runs really cool as well. It gets like 35 to 40 degrees uh, playing games. So I've um, uh, got a Corsair fan on the side. Um, I just grabbed that because it was um, blue and it matches the theme. I'll just go in a little bit and have a look at... All right, so you can see I've actually um, got all brass. Well, I actually uh, took all the coating off, made all these brass. Um, I should have probably clear coated them, but they do go a little bit dull every now and then, but I just have to polish them up. It doesn't take very long. Uh, and that's just those fittings there. 
and then I got sort of under the video card. I can actually take this fan off. It's just got Velcro like that and I can sit that down so you can actually see. And then that just goes down to the bottom and then that just goes out to um, out to the back. I'm just gonna turn it on so you can see the difference in noise and you'll see all the lighting effects. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna turn the lights off completely uh, just so you can see the different lights and where I put them. Uh, it's not going to look as good as in real life. Uh, it'll probably be a bit blurred, but you'll still get an idea on um, how you can work with clear plexi uh, behind the uh, SSD. And also, I've put two LEDs up in the top here. Uh, there's two little holes poking through. And uh, when you shine an LED on an edge, a cut edge of Perspex, you don't actually see it from the front side, but you'll see it trace along the edge. So um, when it's dark, there's actually a blue tracer line all the way along this door. Uh, it looks really good in real life. It probably won't look as good um, through the camera, but we'll see how it looks. I'll just turn this on. It'll probably turn off and back on like it always does. And then once it's up, I'll quickly turn the lights off. Okay, so that's it there. Um, so you pretty much can't even see, I can just see my hand there. Um, the right side, like I can see that completely blue. Um, I'm looking on the camera and it's really not showing it. Um, around the side panel, it's completely blue. Um, it's like there's a blue line drawn around it. Uh, the camera just does not pick it up enough. Um, and then the SSD around the bottom, and it's actually showing up as purple, or it might be showing up as purple, but it kind of looks like it on the screen. Um, and it doesn't look like that in real life, but yeah. It looks really good in real life. You get all the different lighting effects off the white uh, plexi on the side and on the bottom. Um, and then you get it all coming off these barbs because they're really uh, sort of sh really shiny. So it actually looks really good um, at night. Just turn those lights back on. So I'll take this side panel back off. So it's not really too noisy. Um, I don't know how well that's coming up on the uh, on the microphone, but um, I wouldn't say that's really noisy at all. Um, definitely not really server uh, server grade noisy. So, um, so that's pretty much it on that side. Uh, these blocks I painted, they're Bits Power. Um, I think they were X58, X79. Uh, the whole kit, it does more. I painted them white. They come black, and then I just put two blue LEDs in the top. I just went down to JCar, got some LEDs did those myself um, and then I had to stick this little fan on the side because I'm blocking the airflow from this fan with this white um, side I put on there. Um, I had to get a bit of exhaust fan going in. Um, Alright, I'll spin it around and we can see the other side. I might just pop this down. So I've actually got a light up the top. It kind of sort of shines through as well. It looks alright and then there's just the coolant uh, res and uh, pump in there. So currently it's at 29 degrees for the water. Um, that's pretty cool. Um, I've got a temperature sensor in there that just goes into a stop. It's just a stop fitting that goes into a spare uh, G quarter port. So I'm um, all right. So that is the uh, radiator now spinning. I got really low RPM fans uh, because I've got a heap of them. I didn't really need um, need too many of them. Um, I'll just grab them. Um, so I've actually put on a, um, a 12 volt, actually a 24 volt electronic actuator. Uh, you can pick these up at eBay, they're actually pretty cheap. Um, I thought if I'm gonna sort of destroy the side panel with putting this uh, massive radiator on it, I thought I might as well do it in a bit of style. Um, so I don't know if you can see the LEDs kind of glowing in the back, probably not, but I've got an LED strip in the back. Um, so now I can sort of swing this open like this and then it can actually go full 90 degrees out. So if I want sort of extreme airflow, so that's now just pulling straight air. It's not sort of being forced from the back panel. Um, so it's actually sucking from this side and out. So it, oh, actually nothing is going from the other side and out. Um, e either way, it's, um, it's still got plenty of airflow. So I can feel that now all coming through. And then that's just the actuator there, a standard, uh, well, pretty much people using for cars, boots and things like that if you're into cars. And then I just had to sort of work out how to fit it on here and all that. So uh, that comes in really handy to do that. It turned out really well. And then I can just sort of lock it in there and that just holds it tight for uh, for transport. 
Um, so that's pretty much on the, it on the main system. Um, I probably won't show you too much on the top. I've just sort of painted the grill mesh to um, match the front. Um, but yeah, once again, I don't think there is a case on the market that I would actually swap from this to. Um, I just don't know any, any other cases that would be this size. Like, yeah, you've got case lads. Um, you've got other cases that are much bigger, but then you're just going to have so much more weight. Um, I, I can still lift this on my own, uh, and it sort of does er everything I need, and it also has the looks. I still think, think these look much, well, this case looks much better than a lot of other sort of squarish cases out on the market and all that. Uh, even though some, some of it, most of it's plastic, it's a real nice durable plastic. Like, I, I don't know how many systems I've had in here, how many LAN parties and events I've taken this to, but it still looks brand new, uh, minus it's lost a few of the rubber. Um, sort of uh, feet on the bottom but that's because I slide it on and off my table all the time so that's probably expected. Um, I'll go and grab my Norco, uh, the storage box that connects to this. I did cover it in the last video so I thought I might, I might as well just do it anyway in this video so people can just see the whole thing. So this is my storage array uh, It's on the table now. It's a Norco 4224 so you've got 24 uh, three and a half inch uh, drive bays in the front. They're all hot swappable, so you can just pull them out, um, and that's a drive there. So most of them are 1.5 T, two terabytes or three terabytes, um, and there's about 60 terabytes of formatted capacity in here. Um, and then there's no system in here. I'll take the lid off in a tick. It's just running a Chembro 36 port SAS expander. That's just I've just stuck it in there on a bit of wood and that just connects uh, via a four pin Molex to get its power and I use this, uh, this is what you call a mini SAS external I think it's an 8087 uh, that's the type of connector there like that and it's the same on this end and I think this is a two meter cable um, and this is a SAS 6 so I think this does like 10 gigabit or something like that it's equivalent to four SAS um, six uh, ports joined into one and this does the link from these 24 drives back into my main system and it connects into that port down the bottom which you saw and then goes to the RAID card. So I get this 60 terabytes comes up on the main system as standard drives uh, through the RAID controller then I can go to disk management set them up so it's pretty much exactly the same as if they were in the computer so it's not network it's not a, a NAS device it's purely attached it's direct attached to storage that goes straight to the actual uh, system which I prefer uh, I think that's really good so the lid doesn't actually come like this with this carbon fiber effect I just put some carbon fiber film uh, put it on just to try and protect it because uh, I normally do have other ones slide on it and a lot of things slide you can also see it on the front it started to scratch a bit but um, I don't really use this as a sort of a showcase so so the case just lid just slides off um, I don't screw it in so no real need so that's pretty much it inside uh, I've got a Corsair HX100 also yeah HX1000 what in the back to run I got 24 drives in the front then I got another one two three four I've actually managed to fit four more inside because you can actually get four extra ports by uh, running the external. Uh, it's got two externals. It's got external for external drives, and then it's got the port to go to your RAID card. So I use the one of the external ports that for four extra drives, and just looped it back inside, which is this cable here, and that just runs these four extra drives. I'll get a zoomed-in shot on the actual SAS expander. So you can see it's sitting in the back there. It's got the fan on. And then all your ports. I should be able to spin this around and get a better shot for you. Just like that. And then. So yeah, and then they just use mini SAS internal that go to these all in a row. So this one will do this row. And then that connects to the SAS expander that does four drives. And then so you've got your six rows that go down. And then I just added those in there. So that's pretty much it for the inside, pretty basic. Um, you just pretty much sort of draw in the dots, connect the, slide the drives in, add the power. It's got dual, it's got two Molex per each um, backplane row. So you can only use one if you want, but I used uh, two Molex. So you're pretty much doing one Molex does uh, two hard drives, which is quite a lot. Um, so I've actually added this uh, extra, this rail. It didn't come with this. It came with its own rail that had uh, uh, 80 mil fans and they were really, really noisy, so I added that rail, um, added a fan down here, one here, 
Another one on the back, because I actually had this in a rack cabinet and it doesn't get too much airflow. Um, I like to keep my drives really cool. I'll quickly turn this on. It's going to be really noisy. I've actually um, hot wired the power supply to start all the time because it's not in a board. Uh, I just leave it on all the time. So when I turn my power board on that controls my PC, uh, this turns on as well. This is a bit noisier than my system. So if I just grab the mic. It there. So, but when it's in a rack cabinet with the door closed, I don't even hear it. So you can hear all the drives ticking up. So that takes like probably 20 seconds to um, to get everything sorted. Then when the RAID card just does its initializing, it uh, it just picks up all the arrays. I've got about seven or eight arrays on here all up. Well, that's pretty much it for this. Uh, it wasn't really a review, just more of an overview on my experiences with these. Uh, with some of this gear. The main thing is the uh, Cosmos 2 Ultra Tower and the Asus uh, workstation board. Uh, I do a lot of Adobe work, so having the 24 threads uh, and the 64 gigs of RAM works out a pretty good sort of core thread slash uh, RAM ratio. Um, it didn't really cover the CPUs. CPUs are CPUs, don't really need to go into those. Um, and then this Norco system here, which um, is a bit different than what people are probably used to, so that's why I go over this just to uh, give people ideas, uh, help people out who, uh, who are interested in this gear. Uh, as for the case, um, I'm going to be using this case for a long time to come until something better or something that I can utilize better comes out. Uh, I will be reviewing the new uh, Cooler Master Half Stacker pretty soon uh, when that arrives. That's coming from Cooler Master themselves, so if anyone hasn't seen that before, uh, stay tuned. Uh, that's the enormous, it's probably like nearly my height. You can stack them all together. So I will be doing a full system uh, in that. I won't be transporting uh, this one over into it, but I'll be doing a, a full water, water cool system, hard drives in the bottom, radiators in the top. Uh, so I'll be doing that in the next few weeks. Uh, but pretty much um, that's it for everything. So thanks for watching for this review. If you have any questions at all, just um, send a message on uh, YouTube uh, channel, uh, which you're probably already at because you're watching this video. And also, if you go to uh, Facebook and search for GDF LAN Party, uh, that's us there. Just um, send us a message or anything you like and we will help you out. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for next time.